The holidays are a perfect time to check in on your aging loved ones. Whether you're going home to visit with them or whether they're coming to you to visit, it's a great time to kind of take stock and see how they're doing. Maybe everything is fine and it's just normal aging, or maybe it's not. With this video, we're gonna talk about some things that would be good for you to observe and to, to look at and, and check out. And we'll discuss whether it's normal aging or a cognitive decline or physical issue. And I'll give you solutions on what you can do to help. I'm Laurie Miller, and I have owned a home care agency since 2006. I've helped countless number of families with their aging process and navigating caregiving and aging. So I will include a lot of uh, links in the notes below for you to help find solutions for your family. We will discuss observations in the realm of appearance, behaviors, mobility and physical health, environment, communication, and always you have your own gut feelings. If you see something feels off or wrong, go with your gut. The first thing to notice is appearance and specifically personal grooming and attire. Is your mom or dad, are they dressing differently than they used to? Is mom not wearing makeup and uh, brushing her hair and doing everything that she used to do? Is your dad looking more disheveled? So kind of take stock on your personal grooming and attire. Before we even move on, I want to talk about some reasons why this could be happening. And these, um, these reasons could be for a lot of different things. So I want to get it out of the way first. So the pandemic isolation, what happened with that? I mean, it, so many people got out of the habit of getting up, getting dressed, putting on their makeup, doing their normal routine. Maybe they started dressing more casually, wearing uh, workout clothes all the time. Um, I'm guilty of that sometimes too. But that it could just be that and they're out of habit. So maybe mom's not getting dressed and putting on jewelry and makeup and all the things because she's just out of the habit of it. So that's an easy thing to fix if, if it is something that you're concerned about. Another reason, overall reason to think about is physical challenges. Sometimes physically things are just harder to do. So if, if uh, your mom or dad is losing dexterity in their fingertips, maybe that's why the clothes are different. Maybe they can't close, uh, button, use buttons and they're having to wear pullover things. So um, think if it's a notice on, on everything we talk about, is it a physical challenge? Or could it be a cognitive issue? Are they just forgetting to change clothes? Are they wearing their pajamas all day long because they're just forgetting to do it because they have cognitive decline? So look at these, um, these three buckets and, and see if something is going in there. It might just be normal aging or it might just be um, bad habits left over from the pandemic. So there could be other reasons other than physical challenges and the cognitive decline. Something else to think of, are they just overwhelmed? This could go with the cognitive decline bucket, but if someone is overwhelmed, they just can't make a decision, that could be um, a reason why. Jumping back into the grooming category, some solutions for if someone's having a hard time with, with grooming, maybe it, it's a, a man and he can't shave his face like he used to, an electric razor could be very helpful in that regard. Or if a woman's eyesight is not as good anymore and she's having a hard time with putting on her makeup, magnifying mirror. They even make glasses that have magnifying uh, glasses that one lens goes down so you can see that eye. So there could be other tools that someone might just need. Um, even adaptive clothing. They make a lot of great looking adaptive clothing now that have Velcro or easy snaps. Um, even without buttons for pants, they can be Velcro. They look like a, there's an outside button, but it really is a fake button. So there's lots of alternatives to help if, if that is something that you are concerned about. The next thing to look at is um, dirty clothing. Look for signs of whether there's stains on their clothes or spots or they're just wearing dirty clothing. It could be a lot of different things. It could be memory issues that they're just forgetting forgetting to wash your clothes, forgetting to change clothes. It could be something like that. 
It could be vision issues. It could be tremors. There could be a medical condition. There could be lots of different reasons why. So you need to kind of figure out, be a detective and figure out what's going on. It could be a simple solution of helping with laundry or getting a laundry service to come in and help. If there's a caregiver involved, they can start helping with the laundry. Um, and I mentioned before, adaptive clothing can just make um, certain clothes easier to wear than others. The next thing to notice is weight. Whether it's up or down, they're gaining or losing, that's something to take notice of. And it could also be several different things. It could be, if it's a cognition issue, memory problem, they could forget to eat or they could forget that they already ate and ate again. So those are some things to look for. It could be um, the fact that it's hard to cook. Maybe it's a physical challenge and it's just too hard to cook. And either they're eating a lot of junk food and gaining weight or they're just not eating and losing weight. Um, look and see if it's a, it could be a medication that's um, having weight gain or loss. So you can check all those. Um, those different items. And then what are some solutions? Well, a meal service. There's lots of meal service, meal kits, um, ready-made healthy food, whether you have it delivered or if you're local, you can help um, with that. Um, check on the, on the memory and eating. Maybe um, that would be a good reason to have a caregiver in, in the home to at least get a good healthy meal in. That's a possibility. Um, and even for those that are, are forgetting to eat or are just eating too much or whatever it is and they're pretty independent, a fitness tracker, wearing a Fitbit so they can see their steps and kind of see are they not moving around as much as they used to and that's the source of, of weight gain. The other thing to notice is odor and hygiene and um, usually that's pretty it hits you in the face when you know it and you can just smell it. And there could be different reasons for that. It could be a lack of bathing and it could be continence issues. So know what, what the issue is and then you can then you can address it. If it's bathing, are they afraid to bathe? Do they have a fear of falling? Is their um, bathroom not a safe place? Um, some people with dementia have a fear of water and maybe it's just that that's the problem. Um, so some solutions would be one, if it's just a fear of falling, make sure their shower is a safe space with handrails and a handheld um, washer would be helpful, even contrasting tape so they can see where to step over. Um, for someone with dementia, make it a nice experience. Have, make sure it's warm in the room. Maybe some nice smells would be good. Soft towels, make it a, a pleasant music, make it a nice experience, and then it might not be as um, fearful. Um, and then back to the laundry, maybe someone's just wearing dirty clothes and it, they, they don't smell it themselves, but they just need their laundry done and that might be helpful. And as a reminder, I actually have in the notes down below, I have a link where you can, um, download a printable checklist for you if, if you need that. We're going to move on to behaviors now. Sleep patterns. That's a great thing to notice if you can to find out about. Is someone um, sleeping more or less than they were? Those are things to really notice. Um, do they seem unmotivated to get up in the morning? And it could be lots of reasons, but some things you can do to help. One is if they're napping by day, Maybe that's why they're not sleeping well at night. So make sure that they're not bored by day. Is there something they can do? Find purpose for your loved one and maybe keep them more active by day and they'll sleep better at night. White noise machines are helpful for people to sleep at night. Um, if they are getting up a lot at night, make sure you have um, night lights with motion sensors for safety. That's really important. Um, and make sure that uh, they're not taking medications at the wrong time. Sometimes people will take meds at night, but maybe they should be in the morning because they could keep you uh, awake or hyper or vice versa. Maybe someone's taking kind of a medicine that should be at night that helps someone sleep and they're taking in the morning and that makes them um, more tired than they should be. Um, again, if someone had a Fitbit and they wore it at night, you could kind of get some insight 
and track some data on how they're sleeping, those are always good ideas too. You notice your loved one may be having difficulty in making decisions. Do they feel apathetic or even indecisive? If that's the case, um, could be lots of reasons. If it's something that's really different for your loved one, you might want to seek a medical, a professional opinion because maybe there is something else going on. Otherwise, maybe there's some apps that they can use. Alexa is very helpful. Um, there's lots of apps with reminders or schedules, so um, they don't have to make those decisions and they know what the schedule is and it can help them a lot and that can be much easier to do. You notice big personality changes in your loved one. Do they seem more withdrawn or um, socially isolated? Have they stopped going out with friends, not interested in hobbies anymore? If that's the case, I would um, suggest that you seek professional opinion. They could be depressed, it could be cognitive decline, and you should probably um, find out what's going on. Some things to do in the meanwhile, there are some wonderful motion sensors that you can put in the home that you can get some good data on knowing what's going on. Are they just watching TV all day? You could see what room they're in, not visually see, but from the motion. Are they just sleeping the whole day away? Um, are they not moving from room to room? You can really get a lot of good information from that. There's also some good apps to, to use. There's an app called SingFit. That's like uh, having a musical uh, music therapist in your pocket, and that can help call, uh, help relieve agitation. Um, it's just fun. It's something to do. That's a great thing. Maybe a companion in the home would be helpful to help someone get out of the house. Maybe they're afraid to leave the house alone and they just need someone to be with them. Um, pet therapy is also a great thing to do for someone who has agitation. There's lots of other, there's lots of good alternative um, ideas, but first you need to know what's going on. Let's move on to mobility and physical health. So something to notice is their balance and coordination. Are they having a harder time getting up and down from a chair? Are they um, surfing on the furniture? Do they use the furniture to go from place to place? Um, do they appear unsteady on their feet? So if any of these um, things happen, maybe they need some physical therapy to get their balance back in order, to get stronger. Maybe um, talk to the physical therapist. Maybe they need a cane or a walker to help with their mobility. We don't want them to fall and using furniture to surf on is never a good idea. Notice if your loved one is having difficulty with everyday tasks like we mentioned before, like cooking or laundry or getting up and down from a chair. All of these um, everyday tasks, if they're becoming difficult, maybe it's time to bring in help. Maybe it's time for a caregiver a couple times a week. Maybe um, that would be very helpful. And again, we falling is the last thing we want our loved one to do because that will cause a cascade of problems. So maybe they just need a little help with those everyday tasks. Notice your loved one's energy level. Do they feel exhausted? Do they look like they're exhausted all the time? Do they have no stamina? Do they just can't seem to do anything? That could be a sign of depression. It could be a sign that they're not eating well. Make sure they're eating enough and make sure they're eating healthy foods. Um, we mentioned sleep. Make sure they're getting enough sleep at night. Are they, again, napping all day and not sleeping at night? Are they bored silly? Do they need something to do? Being bored can zap your energy. Um, make sure that there's purpose in their life. Get outside and go do something. That, that makes all the difference in the world. Again, if you think it's depression, um, seek professional advice and a professional counsel because maybe there is some counseling they can have. Maybe there's medication that can help. But energy level can um, reveal a lot. Let's talk about the environment. Um, so one thing to look at is the refrigerator and the pantry. Now this can be a very touchy area because people can be offended. If um, you look in the refrigerator and they have a ton of expired stuff, but it's really important that you do clean it up. The refrigerator, the freezer, and the pantry. Um, and I will make a suggestion, ask first, don't just throw stuff out, but um, look and see, and if it's okay, you know, throw stuff that's 10 years old out obviously and even more recent than that 
But in the refrigerator, if there's old mustards and mayonnaise and that kind of stuff, make note of what you need to replace it with. So don't just throw everything out and then they're left with nothing in the refrigerator. And same thing with the pantry. If you are throwing out old soups and old canned goods, make sure you replace it so that they, they have the foods that they think they're, that are there. Um, if there's a caregiver in place, that's a great thing to add to the care plan that periodically, whether it's every couple of months or however often, they should go through the refrigerator, the freezer in the pantry. Some solutions, we, we had mentioned the meal kits and the meal delivery, that's really helpful. So there's not too much of the food being wasted and that they can have more of the fresh food and then throw that away. Um, so that's really important because we don't want people to get sick and eat rotten food. And one other thing, when people have dementia, sometimes they can't taste rotten food. So it's really important that we keep, keep that uh, current. So take a look and see if there's um, uncharacteristic clutter lying around. Is someone all of a sudden um, become a hoarder really or there's just junk all around is it is that's what's happening is it cognitive decline and they just aren't remembering to throw everything away is it a physical issue where they physically are having a hard time making it to the trash can i mean there's there's different reasons and um, it's it's a safety hazard no matter what the reason is so what can you do one, if, if it's a real hoarding situation, I recommend um, contacting a professional, a professional organizer. Um, a lot of them have extra training in hoarding because it is a psychological issue. So that's one thing to do. The other is just uh, the safety hazards is, are there a lot of throw rugs that are, that are um, loose? One, if you can remove the throw rugs, that's the best. But if not, just make sure that they are taped down and they're safe and not a tripping hazard. Um, and not too many. Ideally, you can remove some. Some people have lots and lots of rugs, but if you can remove um, some that are obvious. Tripping hazards, that's great. Um, if it's a physical limitation, bringing in a cleaning service or having a deep cleaning um, once in a while would be helpful. If there's a caregiver in place, they should be able to help with the day-to-day -day cleaning. Um, but check, uh, check and see. Another thing to do is check and make sure all the light bulbs are um, are, are good and not burnt out. Ha have brighter light. Light is such a huge um, uh, mitigating safety hazard. So you need lights, maybe the motion sensors that turn on automatically. Um, make sure the lighting is good. If your loved one's still driving, go and check the car in the garage. Look for dents, look for signs of fender benders. I know when my grandfather was still driving, he didn't tell anybody when he would have a fender bender. He kept it to himself because he was so afraid of getting um, the keys taken away from him, which did happen. But that was a long time ago before Uber and Lyft, which are a great option for people nowadays. So check the garage, make sure um, they, they didn't hit the wall, which could happen. I've seen that before. And, and make sure it, it's, it's really important that people aren't driving if, if it's not safe. Not, it's not safe for themselves and it's not safe for other people. Um, and if you do end up needing to take away the car keys, don't just do that. You need to have another option in place. You can't just say call Uber or Lyft. You need to teach them how to use it, or you can get a, a companion app where you can control the Uber and Lyft, and they don't have to worry about that. They can just ask you to call them a car, and, and, and you can do that. Um, look in your local area. There are a lot of senior transportation companies now, So, but that's really, really important. Don't just take away the keys and don't give any options. Another thing to look at is finances, and this can be very touchy. A lot of people are very private about their finances and don't want to share. So what can you do? Look around and see if you um, see any unpaid bills. Do you see mail piling up? That's a, that's a really um, big thing to notice. There are apps now that can help um, with finance financial management that you could have access to if it's okay with them also. If someone is really private with their money and you're worried about um, frauds and scams, which is something that you should be worried about because it's a big deal now, um, maybe talk to your loved one as in case of emergency that you wanna know where things are. And in case of emergency, how do you manage this and that? And not that you're taking it over or not that you wanna do it, but you just need to know where things are in case in case you need help. And again, I'm gonna put in the in the notes below some links on some great apps that you can actually 
um, check out for yourself. Hearing loss can be a really big deal for an older adult. Um, check and, and see, is your parent asking you um, to repeat what you said very often? Can you tell if there's lots of different people asking questions at the same time or they just can't hear very well, it's too noisy? It's really important if they don't have hearing aids to encourage them to get hearing aids. You, If you think about it, if you can't hear very well, you're, you're losing a sense and that's really important. Um, and they can miss out on a lot of information. So I encourage uh, you to see if you think hearing loss is an issue for them to go get their hearing checked and then to encourage to get hearing aids because there should be no stigma with it. They're missing out on a lot if, if they can't hear very well. Notice their comfort level with the phone and other technology because um, there's so many things now that you can get to help them, whether it's Alexa and these voice activated services. Those are very helpful. There's the jitterbug phone that makes a, a smartphone, cell phone um, easy to use. There's uh, some great products. There's a, a thing called um, Jubilee TV and this is awesome. This is a, I'll put again, put the links down below, but you can put this on their TV and you have a companion app where you can help them with their TV remotely. You can turn it on and off. You can change the channel for them. You can do all kinds of stuff remotely for them, but try to find out the, the truth of, of how they're doing. There's another service called Smarter, which is like a, a senior concierge for tech. So if you get frustrated helping, trying to help your parents walk through tech issues, uh, smarter can help help you with that so you don't end up screaming at each other. But there's lots of other good apps to help them. Um, you don't want them to become isolated. There's uh, the Jubilee TV that I mentioned. You can actually call the TV and answers and then that way you can have a conversation with them. There's CareLink 360 that has video calling. So there's a lot of options out there to help them. We, we don't want people to become isolated just because they're uncomfortable using certain technology. And finally, take note about uh, their conversations. Are they repeating themselves a lot? Are they having struggles finding the right words? Are they forgetting everything? Those are really important things to note. Now, sometimes uh, repeating stories, maybe if it's over the holidays and there's a lot of people in town and they told a story to one person and they forgot that they thought they told it to their nephew and then they tell you again. There could be things that, that explain that, but if in general, you can see that they're struggling um, or if there's too many people in the room and they are just overwhelmed and can't, can't get, it's too much for them. Those are signs that you should probably seek a professional um, advice and, and get some cognitive testing done. Of course, there's aids that can help, whether it's reminders, um, you know, smartwatch reminders, Alexa reminders, there's, there's apps to help with that. But if you fear it's a little more than that, take note of your fear and, and get it checked out. The sooner you can identify cognitive decline and start putting things in place, the, the ideally it, it's slower in, in the progression. There's medicine, there's, there's tools to do. So I urge you to seek professional advice and see a doctor if you worry that it's not just normal aging and that it's really some sort of new cognitive decline. And finally, if you notice changes or you observe things that make you a little uncomfortable, remember, it could just be normal aging. Be a detective, try to understand the underlying reasons for whatever you're observing. Um, and most importantly, enjoy the holidays. Try to make them as stress-free as possible. Um, lower expectations, I think that's always helpful. Um, and again, any questions you have, let me know. I'd love to hear um, your comments. Let me know if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. And again, check out the notes down below. I will have links to a lot of the things I have mentioned. Happy holidays.